I'm Mike Adkins, Chief Communications Officer for Rector County ISD, and I'm joined right now by our ECISD Chief of Police, Jeff Daniels. And so we want to talk safety and security. Thanks for coming and being with us and sitting down for a few minutes with us. So Thank you very me. active and stressful beginning of the school year. You guys have been very busy. Yes. Um, we have two parents have concerns with the, with the way things have begun. Let's talk about, just for a minute, to start with, um, these anonymous threats on social media. So it's something that honestly has been around for several years and you guys have dealt with. And really all over the country, this is happening again right now. Um, can you walk us through your process? How do you handle when you are notified of a threat on social media that is anonymous? Or maybe even it does mention an ECISD school name, but often they're just general anonymous threats towards schools. What's the process that ECISD police uses? Correct. Uh, when we get a threat, we do look into the initial phase of it, of where did the threat come from, what content is listed into the threat, and then we'll de deploy either a detective or a team of detectives to begin the investigation. During that investigation, if we deem that it's credible or outside of what we're capable of doing, we may uh, also bring in state and federal author authorities who have a cybercrime team that assist us in invest investigating these type of incidents. Okay. Depending on, again, kind of what you find, we base a lot of our communication off of that. And so um, we have, you and I conferring, and then with district leaders as well, what is the, the you know the right response? And quite honestly, we have seen the pendulum swing from parents asking us and really wanting to know each and every time we see something come up to that reaching a point where parents begin to tune it out. And so we swing the pendulum to a little bit more to if it's specific to a school, we'll call and do notification. Um, what is your advice for parents as they see these threats and kind of how we handle them and how you feel? It? What do you want them to know when they see kids or they see these threats on social media? First, we want them to share it with us. Uh, we take every threat serious. We want them to do the same thing. We don't ever want to get to a point in time where we see a threat and just think it's just another threat. Uh, everyone gets investigated. Every one of them gets looked into. So when they see something like that being shared, share it with authorities. Uh, don't post it to social media. Don't send it back out. That just makes our job harder in investigating. Uh, we try to get a threat as quick as possible that hasn't been shared multiple times. The more it's shared, just it becomes more complicated for law enforcement to be able to track down the original poster. And you talk about a threat being credible versus non-credible or, or not as credible. The, the response may vary a little bit, but again, you talked about you take everything seriously, and there will be a response from the police department. Yes, to every threat, there'll be a response, whether we deem it credible or not credible. Uh, depending on the nature of the threat and what is being stated will depend on how we deploy from that, that aspect of it. Okay, all right, very good. And so we ended a week on a Friday afternoon with a lockdown at Nimitz Middle School. And the situation around that was a little bit unique because of the way it happened with a student yelling out uh, in the middle of a crowded cafeteria. Um, that created a situation where it was, you know, students were running and people were responding even before the adults on campus had any real understanding of what had happened or why this was happening. Can you talk a little bit about that situation and the uniqueness of it, but also in general, what is a lockdown and what are your procedures and how really how does the law enforcement community locally respond to a lockdown call? So each, each situation is very unique when we come into one of these, these uh, situations of a lockdown or a threat being called out on campus like we saw at Nimitz. Uh, officers are trained to deal with that as they approach the scene. So even with kids running out of the school into our, our uh, fields and you know throughout our community, they already start the process of stopping those kids and, and beginning to deal with that threat, trying to determine the nature of it. What, why are they running? What, where is the threat? What did they see? What did they hear? And that's gonna help the response of follow-up officers and first responders that are coming to the scene. Uh, we have in the district, in every school district across Texas, we follow the standard response protocol, which calls for a lockdown in that situation. The initial threat came from inside the campus, which means we go into lockdown. Uh, our campus responded perfectly. They went, they heard what they heard, what they believed to be true, went into a lockdown, which allowed first responders to come, check the school, clear the school where we could be 100% certain there was no true threat. This was 
you know, one child, one student saw an opportunity to create chaos and did. Uh, we still followed through 100% of our processes of investigation and deeming every child and every staff member was safe in that time. Heard you talk a little bit about too, um, it was 30, 30 to 40 minutes from the time you got the call to the time that you are able to deem the campus was safe um, and then begin releasing students to their parents. Um, that feels like an eternity if you're on the outside waiting to hear about your kids. But in response, in, in terms of a response, it was really very quick and you were, you were talking a little bit about inside, it was orderly. Can you talk a little bit about what is happening inside, particularly once you've cleared it and then as parents are waiting, um, why it feels like it stretches on for them? You're, you're moving very deliberately inside the school. Yes, so inside the campus, once we've checked everything, and I mean everything about your hallways outside of the school to look for any signs of, of, of an incident that took place. Then we go room to room, one at a time, checking the room, checking on students, checking on staff to ensure they're okay and no one is in there to cause any harm. Uh, once we've done that, we begin to determine on whether we're gonna do a release from campus or we're gonna go back to our normal school day. In this instance, we had parents come to school that wanted their children. So we knew we were gonna do a release sure. uh, for those who did show up. Mm -hmm. And so we had to set up a structure inside capable of handling that release. You know, typical school day, it's one clerk handles the parent that comes in to remove their child. We had a thousand parents outside that wanted their child. So it was very chaotic outside. It was very frustrating outside, dealing with the unknown. Or they're speaking to their child through their phone sure. and getting information that, that sometimes not, is not always correct. And so it does create panic and the concern for parents, we understand that, but on the inside, it's not that way. It's calm, it's orderly. We have a process in place. It takes a little bit of time to get other first responders who aren't familiar with our process, processes in the school district right. on board and assign them a job and get them in an area to complete that job. Uh, once we had that set up and in place, we began releasing students just as fast as possible. And like I said, within 40 minutes, we did all of that within 40 minutes and we had our first students walking out the door with their parent safe and we knew everyone else was safe. Yeah, and, and really to you and your team and all of the agencies that responded, because I've heard you say, you don't think there was any agency that's represented in West Texas that didn't respond that day right. and show up on campus. So thank you for the quick response and really just being there to make sure everybody was safe and thank secure. So. Well, it takes a community to keep our schools safe. Yeah, it, it really does. And, and I do want to emphasize that piece on the orderly release. Uh, the last thing we want to do is, you know, in that environment is release a student to somebody that they shouldn't be leaving with. And so that idea, moving from that emergency response to a very orderly release of your student to make sure they're with the right person uh, as they're leaving and the parent does take time and a lot of structure and a lot of work inside the building. So, yes, sir. Yeah, that was good. Tell us a little bit more about the standard response protocol because this is something that we've used for several years and that throughout the state of Texas as well. It's, it's, a, it's a system that is now required for every uh, public education system across Texas. It goes over how they handle an emergency on their, on their, in their, within their school district, whether it be a fire or a lockdown or a secure. They have standards set in place that we practice. Uh, we've, like you said, we've had it in UCSD several years before it was required. We adopted the the, the, the practice here, mm -hmm. and so it just ensures that every school district is on the same page when conducting these emergencies. So it allows us to train first responders no matter where they're from. Uh, you might get an officer that worked in Houston and they're here today. They, they handle the same type of situations That's in Houston true. that we handle here in Odessa the same way. And so it makes the practice standard across the board. Uh, it trains our kids and our parents as well as if they move to other districts, they're gonna have the same emergency procedures to follow. It puts us all on the same page and makes it a safer place. Uh, our practices, uh, our, our schools practice a drill every month. Uh, they practice lockdown That's procedures, right. they practice shelters. Our students are very well prepared for this and we saw that with Nimitz, how well prepared they were. Uh, they knew when the, the call came out exactly what to do and they performed exceptionally. So it's a standard across the state that we've had here for numerous years. And it's, it's become a custom in our, our, in our daily practices on, on how we protect our campuses. And it's, it's, it's shown, it's shown to be a proven uh, great process. And when it's called, um, 
especially as, as a parent and you're listening or you're getting updates from the school, uh, it is very easy to to confuse the, the terminology, but um, yes. that's, that is available on our website and we have signs at schools, but for this moment, um, a lockdown is the most severe response. That's an emergency that, as you said before, the emergency call originates from inside the school or yes. maybe even on the property right there. Um, that's when you are, you are stopping everything and yes. everybody is to take, you know, is to, is to cover behind a, behind a locked door, um, Something take you again. It's the severe response. Stop everything you're doing, basically, and, and hide. Correct. It is the one response that stops the educational process. Okay. Yeah. We're going into the most secure areas we can get into, and wait for first responders to come. Okay. And then there's the secure, which is really a precaution. We've heard of something somewhere. Uh, we're gonna. We're just gonna bring people inside, but inside the building. Everything's going on as usual. Yeah, and it's it's kind of what we see daily with our schools already. We're pretty much already in a secure, the way we control visitors in and out of our campuses. This just doesn't allow anyone to come in. Right. So as a visitor coming in that would like to visit the campus, if we're under secure, you're not going to get in. Right. So that's one thing we want parents to know is understand that, that if the, we are under secure, no one will enter the building. But it's business as usual inside. The kids are still learning. They're still going to lunch and following their normal routine throughout the day. Okay. And then shelter, the other term that can easily be confused, uh, you know, in the moment, um, that's really related to weather. And then we're looking at something that may impact, again, anybody being outside the building. Come okay. And it's secure and shelter, pretty much the same thing. Okay. It's just a, the, the verbiage has changed over the years, which has caused a little bit of confusion. It has. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Talk about preparedness. Um, how prepared and how does ECISD police and then the district larger uh, prepare for this type of emergency because I'm not sure that everybody fully understands how many officers, how they're assigned, how they're trained, you know, um, and, and how you set up daily is to protect all of our students and staff. So ECSD uh, went with the best practice of the state of Texas. The state of Texas came out and said, we want to arm every campus after Uvalde. Uh, the best course of, or the best way to do that is to hire a police officer and put that officer on each campus. That is the best thing you can do. Uh, districts had a choice on, you know, from there, maybe escalating down to guardian programs such as that. Uh, ECSD made a commitment to follow best practices. And so in the meantime, we've employed 53 officers. Current staffing is at 53. Uh, we're almost to the point now where we have an officer on every single campus. We expect to be full by, de by December and be able to have an officer trained in, on, in, in those roles. Uh, that's a huge commitment to safety on our campuses. Another thing we do is uh, we do audits. Our officers on campus daily auditing the safety of our campuses. And if they find an issue, that's reported immediately. And those issues are priorities. So if it's a door that doesn't close right, it's a priority to our operations division to have that door fixed within the end of the day. And then we staff that day, that, that door. It's not just the door doesn't work, someone's monitoring it. So uh, our, secure, our, our campuses are as secure as they've ever been. And it just keeps getting better as we move forward in this process because employees are coming on, getting on board, staff members are learning the procedures more and more and being accustomed to them more To as they're looking out. You see staff members walking by doors and just push on them to make sure they're still closed. In the past, we never saw that. Uh, you see students double-checking doors that they come through to make sure the door has closed behind them. Uh, we've created a culture here of safety, and uh, that is something that a lot of school districts are still trying to achieve. Uh, so in terms of preparedness, we're above a lot of places right now. Uh, other things, initiatives we've taken on in the district is uh, active shooter training. How first responders respond to these situations. Uh, we've been one of the leads in the West Texas area since 2001. Uh, when this was even new coming out, ECSD stepped forward and said, you know, this is something we need to really be prepared for. And so we've trained multiple agencies across West Texas on how to respond to our campuses during these chaotic events, you know, the worst case scenarios. Uh, we continue to host those trainings yearly. Uh, it's every summer we're hosting agencies that come in. We're, we're, we're teaming up with multiple agencies to teach these. I employ about 20 train the trainers for uh, active shooter. So we're one of the leads in the area and that's, that's a big initiative as well as keeping our campuses safe and what we do. Another thing we've done throughout the district to better prepare our district is equipping the officers. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, you could see things in some of these situations across the nation where they're wanting to get the equipment there to be able to do the job. Our officers carry the equipment. Uh, we were able to, through grants, secure 33 rifle resistant shields. Uh, that's the most that we've ever had, and I think that a school district got it the, in the initial process of this. Uh, we've outfitted the majority of our department with rifle resistant body armor. And so that's another huge step in protecting those first responders to go in and deal with the most serious situations to begin with. Now, as we add people, we continue to push for more grants to bring in more equipment and more training. And so the process never stops. We continue right. to evaluate the processes to look at safety and see what's new, what's out there that can better protect our students and staff, and we push towards that. Yeah, impressive, very impressive. Thank you. Um, canine units as well are, are, a, are an advantage that ECISD has right now. Correct, we have four. We have four deployed throughout our schools. Uh, two are narcotics canine and two are weapons canines. And in situations like this where we do receive a threat, it's a great point is our weapons canine are deployed to those campuses that may be mentioned or possibly mentioned, and they do room-to-room -room searches. Uh, looking for weapons. These dogs are highly trained, the officers are trained, you know, they, they, they train monthly, they deploy every day in our campuses, uh, the dogs do an exceptional job, and so that's a great, a great tool that a lot of school districts don't have, is to have that, that animal on scene that's capable of finding a weapon if there is one. Right. And your, your officers, again, kind of going back to training and qualifications, fully licensed peace officers, some trained in SWAT tactics. So, I mean, it, again, Correct. you have a highly skilled, you, you are out, you are putting together and have put together a very highly skilled police force uh, to help patrol. And again, we talk about, we're talking about schools here, but you're also active part of the community and keeping Odessa and Hector County safe. Correct, we are community partners and we, just, yeah. we respond anywhere in the county. We've also been deployed to a lot of uh, counties outside of ours to assist. Uh, we've sent our weapons dogs to places such as Alpine, uh, you know, Midland, uh, I believe Big Springs. So we're not just Hector County, we're a community, you know, we're, we're West Texas. So we help out everywhere we can, but it's because of the expertise we bring into the department that allows us to be able to do that. Okay. Very good. So all of that is really good, but I think you touched on a really important piece of that, and that's the vigilance. And so it is every day is, is serious. Every report is serious. And really, I think that's a big piece of what we call upon ourselves as district employees, but also the community, parents, and students. If you see something, say something, or if you're hearing about something, report to us. It's one of the reasons, really, the culture that you're talking about is really one of the reasons that our, our Crime Stoppers and Student Crime Stoppers program is so well regarded around the state of Texas. It's shown to be very effective. Yeah, we were one of the best programs across the state. Uh, our kids do a, a phenomenal job of reporting issues they see. I, I think we're sitting around 70 reports since Wednesday night of last week. Uh, that's huge. Uh, I remember years ago, we might get one or two Crime Stopper tips that come in on this. Uh, it's nonstop, and they still continue to come in. And we encourage that. You know, if it's, for, if it's new to you, send it to us. Right. Don't send it to anyone else. Right. Send it to us. Yeah. So kind of wrapping this up just a little bit, um, the Crime Stoppers is effective and growing, but I think it also speaks to what you hope is your, your purpose as a campus officer, right? And it's not just about enforcement, but a school police officer should be building relationships, and that's really ultimately yes. what we want, is students and staff to trust and be able to report and feel comfortable doing that. Correct, we want everybody to know that that, that officer's number one job is to keep them safe. And the, the better of a relationship they can build with each other, the more safety that they're gonna get for their campus. It's gonna be a safer environment. Uh, students are gonna feel safer coming up and speaking with that officer. You know, our, and, and we train our officers to go out and visit with the kids, get to know the people you're working with. Uh, don't just be the badge standing in the hallway. Be the badge that they can approach and talk to and they feel secure and safe talking to. Very good, very good. Okay, Chief Daniels, before we're finished, Anything else that you'd like parents, community, staff to know? We would like our parents to, to, to recognize that safety for our campuses begins at home. Have a conversation with your child. It takes five minutes. Talk about things they should not be saying in school, things they should not be sharing. And if things that they are seeing that they need to report to them. You need to have an open line of communication with your child when it comes to safety for them. And that's what the first line of defense for our campus is what happens at home. Okay. 
Chief, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Really good. Yeah, good information. Thank you for, for listening and, and really taking to heart the things that we want to make sure you know. Um, we're about safety, and we want to yes, be sir. as safe as possible every single day. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. All right. Second half is coming up soon. We'll be right back.